Chapter 15 For the second night in a row, Thomas went to bed with a haunted image of Ben's face burned into his mind, tormenting him. How different would things be right now if it weren't for that boy? Thomas could almost convince himself that he could be completely content, happy, and excited to learn of his new life. Aim for his goal of being a runner. Almost deep down, he knew that Ben was only part of his many problems. But now he was gone, banished to the world of the grievers, taken to wherever they took their prey, victim to whatever was done there. Though he had plenty of reasons to despise Ben, he felt mostly sorry for him. Thomas couldn't imagine going out that way, but based on Ben's last moments psychotically thrashing and spitting and screaming, he no longer doubted the importance of the Glade rule that no one should enter the maze except for runners, and then only during the day. Somehow Ben had already been stung once, which meant he knew better than perhaps anyone just exactly what lay in store for him. That poor guy, he thought. That poor, poor guy. Thomas shuddered and rolled over on his side. The more he thought about it, being a runner didn't sound like such a great idea, but inexplicably, it still called to him. The next morning, dawn had barely touched the sky before working sounds of the glade waking, woke Thomas from his deepest slumber since he'd arrived. He sat up, rubbing his eyes, trying to shake the heavy grogginess. Giving up, he lay back down, hoping no one would bother him. It didn't last a minute. Someone tapped his shoulder, and he opened his eyes to see Newt staring down at him. What now, he thought. Get up, you lug. Yeah, good morning to you, too. What time is it? Seven o'clock, Greeny. Newt said with a mocking smile. Figured I'd let you sleep in when, after such a rough couple days. Thomas rolled into a sitting position, hating that he couldn't just lie there for a few more hours, sleep in. What are you guys, a bunch of farmers? Farmers? How did he remember that? Once again, his memory wipe baffled him. Uh, yeah, now that you mention it, Newt plopped down beside Thomas and folded up his legs upon himself. He sat quietly for a few moments, looking out at all the hustle bustle starting to whip across the glade. Gonna put you up with the track hose today, Greeny. See if that suits your fancy more than slicing up bloody piggies and such. Thomas was sick of being treated like a baby. Aren't you supposed to quit calling me that? What? Bloody piggies? Thomas forced a laugh and shook his head. No, Greeny. I'm not really the newest Greeny anymore, right? The girl in a coma is. Call her Greeny. My name's Thomas. That's the girl crashed around his mind made him rem remember the connection he felt. A sadness washed over him, as if he missed her, wanted to see her. That doesn't make sense, he thought. I don't even know her name. Newt leaned back, eyebrows raised. Burn me. You grew some right nice-sized eggs overnight now, didn't you? Thomas ignored him and moved on. What's a track hoe? It's what we call the guys working their butts off in the gardens, tilling, weeding, planting, and such. Thomas nodded in that direction. Who's the keeper? Zart. Nice guy. So long as you don't slough on the job, that is. He's the big one that stands in front last night. Right. He's the big one that stood in front last night. Thomas didn't say anything to that, hoping that somehow he could go through the entire day without talking about Ben and the banishment. The subject only made him sick and guilty, so he moved on to something else. So why did you come wake me up? What, don't like seeing my face first thing on the wake-up? Not especially so, but before he could finish his sentence, the rumble of the walls opening for the day cut him off. He looked toward the east door, almost expecting to see Ben standing there on the other side. Instead, he saw Minnow stretching. Then, Thomas watched as he walked over and picked something up. It was a section of pole with a leather collar attached to it. Minnow seemed to think nothing of it, throwing it to one of the other runners who then put it back in the tool shed near the gardens. Thomas turned back to Newt, confused. How could Minho act so nonchalant about it? What the? Only seen three banishments, Tommy. All as nasty as the one you peeped on last night. But every bug in time, the grievers leave the collar on our doorstep. Gives me the willies like nothing else. Thomas had to agree. What do they do with people when they catch them? Did he really want to know? Newt just shrugged. His indifference not very convincing. More likely he didn't want to talk about it. So tell me about the runners, Thomas said suddenly. 
The words seemed to pop out of nowhere, but he remained still, despite an odd urge to apologize and change the subject. He wanted to know everything about them. Even after what he'd seen last night, even after witnessing the griever through the window, he wanted to know. The pull to know was strong, and he couldn't quite understand why. Becoming a runner just felt like something he was born to do. Newt had paused, looking confused. The runners? Why? Just wondering. Newt gave him a suspicious look. Best of the best, those guys. Have to be. Everything depends on them. He picked up a loose rock and tossed it, watching it absently bounce as it bounced to a stop. Why aren't you one? Newt's gaze returned to Thomas sharply. Was, till I hurt my leg a few months back. Haven't been the bloody same since. He reached down and grabbed his right ankle. Absently, a brief look of pain flashing across his face. The look made Thomas think it was more from the memory, not the actual physical pain he still felt. How'd you do it? Thomas asked, thinking more, thinking the more he could get Newt to talk, the more he'd learn. Running from the bug and grievers, what else? Almost got me. He paused. Still gives me chills thinking about I might have gone through the changing. The changing. It was the one topic that Thomas thought might lead him to answers more than anything else. What is that anyway? What changes? Does everyone go psycho like Ben and start killing people? Ben was way worse than most, but I thought you wanted to talk about the runners. News tone warned about the conversation was about the changing was over. This made Thomas even more curious, though he was fine just going on going back to the subject of runners. Okay, I'm listening. Like I said, best of the best. So what do you do? Test everybody, see how fast they are? Newt gave Thomas a disgusted look, then groaned. Show me some smarts, Greeny. Tommy, whatever you like. How fast you can run... Bloody... Sorry. How fast you can bloody run is only part of it. A very small part, actually. This piqued Thomas's interest. What do you mean? When I say best of the best, I mean at everything. To survive a bug in maze, you gotta be smart, quick, and strong. Gotta be a decision maker. Know the right amount of risk to take. Can't be reckless. Can't be timid, either. Newt straightened his legs and leaned back on his hands. It's bloody awful out there, you know? I don't miss it. I thought the Grievers only come out at night. Destiny or not, Thomas didn't want to run into one of those things. Yeah, usually. Then why is it so terrible out there? What else didn't he, didn't he know about? Newt sighed. Pressure. Stress. Maze pattern different every day. Trying to picture things in your mind trying to get us out of here. Worrying about the bloody maps. Worst part, you're always scared you might not make it back. A normal maze would be hard enough, but when it changes every night, a couple of mental mistakes and you're spending the night with those vicious beasts. No room or time for dummies or brats. Thomas frowned. Not quite understanding the drive inside him, urging him on. Especially after last night. But he still felt it. Felt it all over. Why all the interest? Thomas hesitated, thinking scared to say it out loud again. I want to be a runner. New turned and looked him in the eye. Haven't been here a week, Shank. A little early for death wishes, don't you think? I'm serious. It barely made sense even to Thomas, but he felt it deeply. In fact, his desire to become a runner was the only thing driving him on, helping him accept his predicament. Newt didn't break his gaze. So am I. Forget it. No one ever became a runner in their first month, much less their first week. Got a lot of proven to do before we'll recommend you to become to the keeper. Thomas stood and started folding up his sleeping gear. Newt, I mean it. I can't pull weeds all day. I'll go nuts. I don't have a clue what I did before they shipped me here in that metal box, but my gut tells me that being a runner is what I'm supposed to do. I can do it. Newt still sat there, staring up at Thomas, not offering to help. No one said you couldn't, but give, a re give it a rest for now. Thomas felt a surge of impatience, but listen to me on this. Tommy, start stomping around this place, yapping about how you're too good to work like a peasant, how you're all nice and ready to be a runner, You'll make a lot of enemies. Drop it for now. Making enemies was the last thing Thomas wanted, but still, he decided on another direction. Fine. I'll talk to Minnow about it. Good try, you bug and shank. The gathering elects runners, and if you think I'm tough, they'd laugh in your face. For all you guys know, I could be really good at it. It's a waste of time to make me wait. 
Newt stood to join Thomas and jabbed a finger in his face. You listen to me, Greeny. You listen all nice and pretty? Thomas surprisingly didn't feel that intimidated. He rolled his eyes, then nodded. You better stop this nonsense before others hear about it. That's not how it works around here, and our whole existence depends on things working. He paused, but Thomas said nothing, dreading the lecture he knew was coming. Order, Newt continued. Order. You say that bloody word over and over in your shock head. Reason we're all sane around here is because we work our butts off and maintain order. Order's the reason we put Ben out. Can't very well have loonies running around trying to kill people, now can we? Order. Last thing we need is you screwing that up. The stubbornness washed out of Thomas. He knew it was time to shut up. Yeah, was all he said. Newt slapped him on the back. Let's make a deal. What? Thomas felt his hopes rise. You keep your mouth shut about it, and I'll put you on the list for potential trainees as soon as you show us some clout. Don't keep your trap shut, and I'll bloody make sure that you never see that happen. Deal? Thomas hated the idea of waiting, not knowing how long it might be. That's a sucky deal. Newt raised his eyebrows. Thomas finally nodded. Deal. Come on, let's get us some grub from fry pan, and hope we don't bloody choke. That morning, Thomas felt... That morning, Thomas finally met the infamous fry pan, if only from a distance. The guy was too busy trying to feed breakfast to an army of starving gladers. He couldn't have been more than 16 years old, but he had a full beard and hair sticking out all over the rest of his body, as if each follicle was trying to escape the confounds of his food-smeared clothes. Didn't seem like the most sanitary guy in the world to oversee all the cooking, Thomas thought. He made a mental note to watch out for nasty black hairs on his meals. He and Newt just joined Chuck for breakfast at a picnic table, right outside the kitchen where, when a large group of gladers got up and ran towards the west door, talking excitedly about something. What's going on? Thomas asked, surprised him, surprising himself at how nonchalantly he said it. New developments in the glade just became a part of life. Newt shrugged as he dug into his eggs. Just seeing Minho off and, and Albie, they're going to go look at the blooding, bugging dead griever. Hey, Chuck said. A small piece of bacon flew out of his mouth when he spoke. I've got a question about that. Yeah, Chucky? Newt asked somewhat sarcastically. And what's your bloody question? Chuck seemed deep in thought. Well, they found a dead griever, right? Yeah, Newt replied. Thanks for the bit of news. Chuck absently tapped his fork against the table for a few seconds. Well, then who killed the stupid thing? Excellent question, Thomas thought. He waited for Newt to answer, but nothing came. He obviously didn't have a clue.